Look at that one. Uh, Ooh. All this gear kind of seems a little silly, but it wouldn't have seemed silly 250 million years ago. You know why? Well, we are on the edge of a Permian reef. If you can imagine, this was once a vast tropical sea. That's the main reef behind me. And right where we're standing, this was the fore reef. Tabitha, is that the right pronunciation? Tabitha, yeah, from Bewitched. <laughs> Tabitha, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's not my generation. <laughs> Tabitha, okay, sorry. I'm easy, I'm Tony. Dr. Fauci, can you take us back to the moment that you heard that there was an effective vaccine? What was that moment like for you? How did you feel? What did you start thinking? What was the most humbling or surprising moment of your career in space? You know, I think it's pretty humbling when you go out on a spacewalk. Uh, yeah, I've actually never been asked that question in the way you asked it. Well, you're very good at what you do. Oh, you're, thank you. You're very easy and conversational. So thank you. That was fun. Thanks, Tabitha. Thanks for working this whole thing out. You were a total pro on this, man. I will not forget you. Very, very <laughs> impressive. Have a great day. So I, I, clearly, I love sports, so I'm so excited to talk about this. I, I'm so excited that you are too. So I actually, in a previous life, I was a sports reporter. So I also love sports. Um, and I am curious, you know, now we see these social justice issues being elevated through sports. Can you talk about the importance of the combination of politics and sports and how it can truly elevate these issues? And we're here to talk about a place that we all call home, our planet Earth. We are going to dive in literally and figuratively and talk about conservation and how your actions do truly make a difference. Water is a building block of life. Did you know that one out of every three breaths that you take is sourced from the ocean? We have teamed up with the University of Miami's Rosenstiel School to take you live, yes, live underwater to talk about corals and how they affect your life and the planet's life cycle. But hey, you don't want to see me up here talking about it. Let's go ahead and get below the surface and dive in. The health of that ecosystem and packs everything. From a coral reef, here's NBCLX's Tabitha Lipkin. We're coming to you from the bottom of the ocean. Hey, Shep, yeah, this is Rainbow Reef. We're about two miles off the coast of Miami, and we are talking about the importance of corals. Shep, did you know that only 1% of our ocean floor is made up of corals, but 25% of marine life rely on it? Look. There's even some fish right over there. While I've been diving with sharks for years, Dr. Neil Hammerschlag has been studying them for two decades. Was I, I'll do something for you. Ready? You think they'll allow me? Oh, you stay there. You stay there. You don't go anywhere, Jeff. <laughs> How dare you? You're interviewing me now, which yeah, is well, weird. So I'm interview you. And I'm not sure if you knew this or not, but it is inauguration day. I know, not the best kept secret. But let's go ahead and check back in with NBCLX storyteller Chase Kane, who is NDC. And Chase, my understanding is you've been walking around the nation's capital for the last 24 hours and all morning, but you you have a bird's eye view of the parade route now. What are we looking at? The wait is over. It is Tuesday, November 3rd, election day in America, and it's an election like no other. Let's get back to the Senate by looking at the U.S. Capitol Lego style. Each of these squares and these three little dudes that you're seeing on each side actually represent the U.S. Senate. And there's two independents you'll notice right here. All right, check it. It is just before 530 in the morning on Sunday. I have a flight at 2.09 that I've got to catch back to Dallas from El Paso, and I am going to go to Carlsbad Caverns National Park. This this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it was something that as I was reading about it, everyone was like, this is bucket list, you have to do it. Okay, I'm a little out of breath because I'm running, because I'm running behind. So I'm running and running behind. But this is maybe the coolest column here. It's called Rock of Ages. You've done something so many people say that they're gonna do. They're gonna take this trip of a lifetime and you two get to do it with your best friend. And I wanna know, what did you learn about yourselves on this journey? I read about your passion and what drives you. And I did read that your fiance was murdered back, I believe in 79, correct? And I was wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing that story and why it helps fuel you today. Oh, mama, come over here. Tabitha wants to talk to you. How many, how many are lies and how many are truths? Three are lies. Three are lies. Okay. Mm. Which one do you think it is, mama? I don't think she got no law degree. She ain't all that smart. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> ah! Okay. Before we really get started in this, I want to know the moment that you decided to get involved in politics and how that moment got you into becoming basically a White House staff member under the Obama administration. 
Great question. Walk through the dark, still using only the light here on my uh, my phone and my camera. Get to my car down three flights of stairs, drive to the studio, in which we do have generators. And that'll give you the opportunity to start the show. And yes, thanks to the magic of generators, a lot of makeup, and some high heels, I am able to be with you here on this Tuesday, February 16th. You are watching NBCLX. I'm Tabitha Lipkin. We're not going to waste any time. We are going to keep talking about what's happening with this weather that's impacting millions of people. Welcome back to NBCLX. I'm Tabitha Lipkin, joined by Hubert and Hubert, because my friends Joe Beth DeVera and Clark Fouracre, they are working from home as we social distance, which looks like Sasquatch is in Sequoia National Park. I don't see the picture, but I can recreate it. I, it's always kind of looks like this and then media outlets claim that it was Bigfoot but for all of you searchers out there the Bigfoot search does continue. I challenge you to some push-ups. So <laughs> just in general it's Friday. It's Friday. What is wrong she with you? She did not know this was coming so um Tabs what? Go ahead. What you want. Come on I know you're down. What I know you you're want? down. All right give me Let's see, without using your knees, okay. let's just go to Sorry. five. I'll keep it easy. Five? five? That's it? That's it. You want five push-ups. Well, let's see. All right. You might go further than that. One, ooh, two, ooh, three. <laughs> Clap your hands. Clap your hands. <laughs> <laughs> You're a psychopath. <laughs> hey, look at her. <laughs> We're going to see if you can do it. HR said yeah, no I'm going to step back step just in case. Americo back there might right. be in harm's way. So well, let's see what you got. So it, it goes middle, this way, up. If you go one hit wonder right now. Maybe. Okay, which way you got? So She's you go. hitting that way. All right. Go! Oh! oh you thought. One you, try, you guys, one try. You guys really believe in me, don't you? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> got Get out of here with that. We made it to the sand dunes of Guadalupe Mountains National Park, which Dr. Madrano said was his favorite part of the entire park. A very stark contrast from the Permian Reef that we were showing you before. But all of this really shows you the difference in just the climates right here in one single park. One final question before I let you go. Do you have a favorite dive spot? I do. It, I, that is St. Lucia. Have you ever? It's beautiful. That is also my favorite dive spot. And I'm not messing oh, you're with kidding you. Me. The, the soft corals of St. <laughs> Lucia are, are they're unlike any other place in the entire world. And people don't think yep. St. Lucia for corals, but they're so vibrant, yeah. right? So I feel like when you tell people you're a comedian, because I've also dabbled in the art, uh, the first okay. thing that they say to you is, oh, tell me a joke or make me laugh. And that's the worst thing someone can say to you. But I know you're skilled and experienced, and now I'm gonna kind of switch a roux on it to you and be like, do you, have you developed a joke that you tell people when they ask sure. you that? I'd like to know now that you've had a moment to kind of pause, you mentioned, you know, you've been go, go, go. What have you been able to reflect on 